Okay, it's time for another movie review on Marshall's Bazaar. As always, spoiler alert. Hello, people of the universe, and welcome to another movie review edition of Marshall's Bazaar, starring me, Marshall Brown. Before I begin today's review, I want to pose this as a question. What's the greatest Steven Spielberg film ever made? I think it's an important question to ask because Steven Spielberg has given the world of cinema incredible treasures that will be cherished for a millennia. Because of his work, cinema will never be the same. Who could forget such classics like Jaws, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Jurassic Park, Saving Private Ryan, Ready Player One, I hope, please let it be good, okay. If you had to ask me, I think the greatest Steven Spielberg film ever would have to be his timeless 1980s classic known to the world as E.T., The Extraterrestrial. I just got done watching it right now on my 4K Blu-ray playing Xbox One S on my really big TV with my brand new sound system. So as you can see, I've really come back for these movie reviews with the re-up in terms of the technology. Experiencing, like, I... I am just a little tongue-tied right now because I have to say this. Experiencing this film will require the best in the audiovisual department. It is one of those movies that is well worth the investment when it comes to a home theater system or just going to see it in theaters if they ever do decide to re-release it again. But I saw it at home, and here are my thoughts about it. These are my reactionary thoughts, as always, and I gotta tell you, it's very weird to see a film like this. It's specifically weird to see an alien encounter film that is exactly just like this, for many reasons. At the time, I believe 1982 was when this movie came out? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. At the time when this movie was released, a lot of alien encounter movies followed the beat of the horror film genre, what with a lot of campy 1950s and 60s sci-fi films having that stereotypical alien thing with the, oh god, they're coming to get us, ah, and stuff like that. Even with more modern films at the time, like Alien, it was all meant to be frightening, scary, disturbing because of what these aliens could possibly do to us. It was all about two sides being against each other, the human race fighting back against anything that comes to grips with any sort of encounter whatsoever being assumed as deadly. But this movie changes that. In a world where many are divided amongst heavy issues, in a world where more and more people are beginning to not appreciate their neighbors, this is, I think, a film that is so important to this day and age, even in 1982. Nothing like this was ever done before. But this movie, my God, it turns the alien encounter just complex and flips the whole entire subgenre of films upside down, changing it to something that is all about love. So here's the basic plot. Some alien race comes to the Earth, for whatever reason we won't know, but some humans find that there are mysterious creatures roaming about, so the aliens begin to escape so as not to be detected. But one alien is left behind, as this alien is affectionately known as E.T. This name is given to E.T. by Elliot, a young boy who encounters this alien in the wild as he notices something is strange when he goes outside and sees this alien in the middle of nowhere rather than, you know, going back and forth and just trying to tell everybody else about this as if anybody would believe you that an alien or some goblin or something like that landed on planet Earth. He decides to just get closer to said alien. He decides to become great friends with E.T., teaching E.T. everything about the planet Earth, as I think most children would do. You see, 
Children aren't born with hate, and this film is yet another supporting claim against such a wonderful, fantastic look at behavior. And honestly, with the adventures that E.T. gets into and everything that he does to try and get home, it's something that I think to this day is yet another one of those things that'll make me cry right next to Terminator 2 and possibly every Pixar movie ever. But enough about other things. I want to say that um, this movie is very important because of its subject matter because it hits all the right notes of cinema that a movie should do. Movies are a visual medium. And this movie, like many other amazing, wonderful, great films of its time, is a movie that has very little dialogue in it. It allows the viewer to take in and interpret what they feel about such encounters that happen between different species. It is a movie that is a whimsical tale about just childhood memories in general. Because these kids, well, the three kids in the film, Elliot... Gertie and the older boy, I believe, was Michael or something like that. They all basically, you know, go through this as kids in their childhood and they experience love and compassion through the eyes of a mysterious alien that they know as E.T. They go through this incredible journey to try and hide E.T. from the United States government trying to escape and trying to show the entire world that love conquers all and love is what gives life its meaning in my opinion at least the movie basically shows that with love anything's possible as the alien does live because of Elliot's compassion not because of human science mumbo jumbo and medical capability that at the time was impressive by what the movie shows but just isn't enough to save E.T. No, it takes a kid and his flying bicycle and his telepathic magical connection that he has with E.T. to be able to get this alien back to where he belongs, to his home. And as I've said, this movie does a lot of good things. Not just with the minimal dialogue and the wonderful, breathtaking cinematography that really does turn small-town suburbia into a wonderland, but also specifically because of this alien-human dynamic that wasn't done before in movies at the time, and I think is an important message that everybody should listen to. Love conquers all, not hate, not scientific discovery. It's really... I think the biggest interpretation of human nature on uh, Steven Spielberg's part. And thank God there's no sequels to this thing. Seriously. Apart from a Universal Studios ride and a couple of really, really bad video games here and there, this is a movie that it's held its virginity throughout the years with it being the only encapsulation of said franchise that has gone into a little bit of merchandising, but it's okay. It's all good. It's a wonderful movie. But if you want me to nitpick, I will say this. As somebody who has seen a lot of movies in the past, it is pretty clear that George Lucas and Steven Spielberg really do like to play with each other and toy with each other in their movies, as evident by the many Star Wars toys and Halloween costumes that are seen throughout the movie, and the kid spends like a good chunk of time in one scene talking about his Star Wars action figures and stuff. I just had to slap my head and be like, we get it. George Lucas and Steven Spielberg are eternal lovers that need not be separated. Wonderful. Brilliant. As evident by the E.T. race being apparently existent in the Star Wars universe. I mean, honestly, it's hard to even criticize this movie because apart from one part where, some, where the kid throws and litters his Reese's Pieces bag and apart from some other weird thing where the scientists allow the kids flowers to be in the same area. I don't know. It's just, it's a bunch of stuff that I feel like could be on an episode of cinema sins. If I haven't seen said ET episode already, like really, this is 
honestly as close to cinema classic as you can get. It should be recognized as part of cinema history, as it is something that does all the right things when it comes to showing, not telling, the message. Oh yeah, one more thing. Steven Spielberg's spotlight fetish and his flashy, flashy light fetish is evident here. It can get annoying like it was in Jurassic Park, in my opinion, but I will have this to say. As is with a lot of the dark shadows portrayed in the cinematography of the movie, I think it's important that he did what he did because it's a movie that's up for interpretation. It's up for the viewer to really imagine and see and take in what the viewer wants, needs, and understands from something that is happening on the screen and you know stuff like that. But, you know, Spielberg loves putting flashlights and spotlights in his movies, so get used to that if you ever watch any of his movies. But with that said, that's going to do it for this week's episode of Marshall's Bazaar. I definitely recommend E.T. if you can get your hands on it in any way, shape, or form. If they do re-release it in the theaters... I'd actually go as far as to say it's a mandatory requirement that you see it, please. <laughs> well, but yeah, it's on 4K. I got it, and I really enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, that's uh, this week's episode. And with that said, feel free to follow me on my brand new dedicated uh, Marshall Brown Marshall's Bazaar SoundCloud for all new episodes of Marshall's Bazaar all the time. And uh, you'll feel free to follow me on my YouTube, subscribe there for new content, and follow me on social media for new updates about said content, whether or not I may or may not post them. Ooh, but hey, Whew, that movie really did did rock me. I think I, I think I need to take a nap after that. It was a it's an emotional roller coaster to say the very least. But yeah, um, thank you so much for listening, and I will be with y'all next time. So here we go. Until we meet again, far-fetched and wonderful listeners, Marshall Brown, out!